What's up guys? So this is my fellow Ode, and this is a grinder that I've been using every day to make espresso. Uh, one thing you may have noticed on the internet, or especially from fellow direct, is that it's not recommended to use this grinder for espresso. And there's a number of reasons for that, but I think the biggest reason is the one I'm going to show you right now. So here in this cup, I have a very, very light roast. This is a Guji Ethiopian coffee to buy one of my favorite roasters from Singapore, Mood Trap Roasters. And this is a bean that I grind regularly in my DF64, but if I try to grind it here in my Ode, well, let's just see what happens. So what you just saw happen was a fellow Ode was trying to grind these beans. But these beans, because they're so light and so dense, that the 150 watt motor in here is not capable of grinding those beans for espresso at such a fine grind. And the motor actually stalled. That was the beeping you heard. So uh, I think that's the biggest reason why this grinder should not be used for espresso. Just because uh, with very dense beans, grinding so fine, you're going to get a stalling happening. And the great thing about this Ode is because it's so smart that when it does detect the stall, it's not running power through it and so you're not getting overheating in the motor or it's not causing one of the coils inside to overheat. And that's really what kills these electric motors that are stalled. It's it being stuck and electricity continuing to flow through that motor is going to cause overheating in the coil. It's going to burn that coil out quickly. You're going to get an unbalanced uh, motor and then eventually it'll die. This O doesn't necessarily have that problem. It does to a smaller extent. But still, I use this grinder every day uh, for espresso. I actually use it as my dedicated decaf grinder. I grind these beans. And later we can uh, make a shot using this decaf ritual. And this is a darker roast. The bean is a lot lower in density. So this oat actually has no problem grinding these beans and, and fine enough to even choke my decent. <laughs> the big problem with this grinder is you can't use it for every single bean. But if you're brewing with dark roast or even down to a medium light or kind of a not so dense light roast, this oat can handle it just fine. But when you get to this ultra light beans, this uh, is going to stall. There's a number of other reasons why the fellow Ode coming out of the factory is not a good grinder for espresso. The second reason why I would not recommend using the Ode in stock form is that the burrs that come with the Ode are not capable of producing grinds fine enough for espresso. So the burrs that came in my Ode were these burrs and uh, these have very interesting interlocking designs where this, these teeth are quite sharp and raised and they interlock around the outside edge of this other bird. But actually, this, these teeth have holes that are quite large and they, the minimum grind size that these birds are capable of making are actually too large for espresso. And uh, some people complain that they're actually too large for V60s. So if you actually look at the outfall here, you can see that there's some quite large gaps that appear along the side. And that's basically defining you know, the smallest particle size you're gonna get and this is just too large for espresso. But if you replace your burrs with any other set of burrs, like here I have SSP multi-purpose burrs, and you can see here that the outflow on these burrs, much, much smaller. So you can get uh, very fine grinds out of this grinder by just replacing those burrs. Um, and here I have some Etal Mill burrs, and likewise, the, the outflow on these burrs are quite small. So both these burrs, the Etal Mills, the multi-purpose brew burrs from SSP, and internally I have the SSP cast burrs, and when I take it apart, I can show you what those burrs look like. Um, if you just replace these stock burrs, then you know, you're know you already in a place where you are able to grind fine enough for espresso. But the third big reason why you shouldn't use the Ode for espresso is the actual dial. So this dial stock from the factory is actually stepped. So here I have another adjustment knob. And you can see here that when I move it, it's, it's clicking in a place. Because the Ode from factory is stepped, you can't pick a setting in between any of these steps. You are forced, when you buy a stock Ode, like this knob here, the stock knob, to pick one of these preset grind settings that Fellow has limited you to. So actually, each one of these steps on the Ode is 25 micron burr gap, and that is just too large of a gap to effectively dial in espresso. The fourth problem with this Ode is that regardless of this little knocker that it ships with, it actually retains a fair bit of grinds 
uh, when you're doing espresso. So it just makes purging a little bit more difficult. And that's where this bellows comes in. The last thing I dislike about this oat is the dials itself. The numbers go from 1 to 11, and in between each number is a third of that number, <laughs> which is a very awkward scale, especially considering that the bird gap um, of each step is 25 micron. It's a very strange thing to work with. Even after you modify your grinder to be continuous, it's just a not intuitive scale to use. There's not a lot of scales that you use on a day-to-day -day basis that are divided into thirds. Um, usually you're expecting maybe halves, quarters, and eighths, or uh, something more like decimal, like one-tenth, one two-tenths, three-tenths, and not a third or two-thirds. So even when I'm dialing espresso, after I've uh, modified my O to be stepless, I just have trouble figuring out what number I'm on. So I'm always like kind of settling on these weird thirds, or sometimes I'm at sixths, or I just estimate this is 0.2 or 0.1, but it's a really unintuitive dial. So I just want to go over all the mods that I made to my Ode that make it more usable. Also want to introduce this last mod, which is here, a vernier scale. And this is going to fix this problem I have with the, the scale itself. But at the end, I'll, I'll show myself installing this scale adjustment dial onto this Ode. Uh, but first, why don't we get started by taking this grinder apart. And the first thing you want to do, actually, is unplug this grinder. Because really, you never want to work with a grinder that's plugged in, unless you like to live life on the edge. And you don't appreciate having fingers. So why don't we take this grinder apart, and then I can show you a couple of things here. So first, if your ode ever gets jammed like mine is, it's quite simple to fix. Just remove the faceplate, remove these four screws, and then you will be able to see the inside of your grinder. So you can see here, I have quite a bit of coffee uh, caught up here. And um, inside here is actually where the coffee is um, jamming the grinder. The, the oat is stuck here. First thing you wanna do is pull out this key. When you have a lot of coffee in here, or sometimes some of these burrs, carriers are just a little bit difficult to remove. So sometimes you're gonna need some sort of hooks to get in underneath and just pull out your burr carrier such that you can remove it from your grinder. And now you can see where all those beans have been stuck. So this grinder got stuck very quickly and uh, couldn't rotate anymore. There wasn't enough power in this grinder to grind these beans. So I'm just going to dump these out. Use a brush here to clean out any coffee from inside the coffee grinder. Just get as much of this coffee out as you can. So I just want to show you guys these burrs here. These are the SSP cast burrs. And you know, a lot of people have been asking me how I like these burrs. So just as a little preview, I do really like these burrs. I think they have a lot of nice texture, a lot of nice body, a lot of sweetness. Um, very forgiving. They grind very fast, especially relative to the multipurpose burrs. But they don't highlight the acidity as well as the multipurpose burrs do. Yeah, in the future I will eventually have a little taste test against other burrs, but you know, for now, just know that I'm enjoying these. Let me just finish cleaning up here. So I like to have a big paintbrush like this on my counter so I can wipe up any stray grounds. <laughs> Brushing them into a bowl, just not on the ground here. Okay, so that's what the inside of this grinder looks like. But I actually wanted to show you this mod, which is the stepless mod. So this is my stepless modded adjustment dial. And this is another adjustment dial that I have. This, but this one, you can see, is stepped. So the way that these O's actually work is that there's a bearing here, and this is actually what this uh, bird carrier rotates on, on a bearing here. And the adjustment is actually turning a threaded portion here. So this is actually, this is actually a screw. You can see this screws off completely. And inside on the back of this detent plate are a bunch of little um, holes where this pin is sprung. There's a spring here. Can you see this spring? So there's a little pin with a little round ball at the tip that enters into these holes and that's what actually causes the ode to be stepped, right? And so here there's actually 40 holes on the back of this adjustment plate and if you actually measure the thread pitch, that's a distance between each of the threads on this ode uh, adjustment, 
screw, it's actually one millimeter apart. So that's why I know that each one of these uh, adjustments is 25 micron because one millimeter is a thousand microns. You have 40 of these uh, steps. So a thousand divided by 40 is 25. That's how I know that each one of these steps are 25 micron. And why uh, as a stepped grinder, the steps are just too far apart to really dial an espresso. 25 micron, it's the difference between a choke shot and a turbo shot. So if you want to do anything in between there, well, you're kind of hosed with an ode. And that's one reason I don't recommend the ode in its stock form to make espresso. Inside my grinder, however, when you unscrew it, you can't actually hear any steps. And that's because I have modified my grinder to have a stepless adjustment. And the way I did that was quite simple. I just designed a little TPU insert, and I'll link uh, the Thingiverse page to this insert in the description below, but it just, that print fits exactly in those detents, those little holes. And I've also designed a little rubber bumper that instead of filling into the detent, now it just puts pressure onto this flat surface. And now this ode has become stepless and this pin is just by friction holding uh, the adjustment in place. Uh, the other thing I've done is add four layers of Teflon tape and that's just helping with some of the lash. Lash is like how much play there is in the adjustment. And the Teflon just takes up some of the loose space in the thread so you get less play uh, in this bird carrier. It means your alignment's gonna be a little bit more stable. And that's how uh, the stepless mod works. It's really quite simple. There's not really that much to it. And there's a lot of different ways to do these mods. I think a lot of people put like epoxy or JB Weld or some silicone and fill it. For me, I have a printer, so it was really easy to just print something uh, to fit in here. If you've watched my other Ode video, you've seen me zero the grinder. Now, because I've taken it apart, I have to do it again and um, set it up. So I'll just do that really quick. Okay, so now that I've screwed this adjustment plate back on the grinder, it's safe to use. You're not gonna uh, get your fingers caught in anything, so I'm gonna plug it back in. And before you turn it on, you wanna make sure to adjust it, touch, then back off a little bit. And before, um, the grinder was beeping because it had stalled, but now when I push this button, because we've cleared out the, the coffee, it's gonna start running. Perfect. So now if you just adjust it finer, you'll hear it touching, right? I'm gonna turn it off here. And now what I'm gonna do is actually uh, set this grinder to zero and then put this faceplate back on. So actually I want to be able to hear the burst touch because uh, that's important for me uh, to calibrate my grinder. And that's important because when I install the new scale, I need to be able to calibrate it this knob on. So now I can screw this in. So now what I want to do is actually put my new, this is something I designed in some illustration software. What I did is I just printed it out onto a piece of paper and I just cut it out with scissors. You know, if there's a lot of interest in this, people want to want to use them for themselves. I can maybe do a run of them, maybe get a print shop to print them. Uh, if, you, if you guys are interested, let me know. So my plan was to take this dial and this vernier and to glue them onto the face of this grinder. Um, because I usually use the grinder face on, I don't like looking here in the bottom left corner. I, I, I prefer to look kind of at the top. So I'm gonna set my zero point right where the six is. Perfect. So uh, I'm just gonna take this glue stick and just glue it on. And I'm using a glue stick here because it's just water soluble. It's gonna be easy to remove if I ever wanna take it off. All right, so it's really simple to do. I'm just gonna put it over here and then glue it on. And now I have a new dial. And so this is a vernier and this is really special. So um, first I'm gonna install it. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is find the zero point on my grinder. And when you're finding the zero point, there's actually some lash, some free play in the knob itself. So make sure to adjust down to find the zero. So here's what I'm gonna call zero, I'll turn this off. So this vernier is gonna sit right here on this zero. And it should line up perfectly with where the zero is now. So I'm just gonna put some glue on the back of this and I'll glue it on here. So let's just glue this on. 
Okay, so let me show you how this Vernier scale works. So you have this major tick marks. So you have 0, 100, and each one of the tick marks in, in between is 10 micron, right? There's 10 little ticks in between. And then here, you have this Vernier scale. And this lets you get down to the micron resolution. So how do I know um, I'm at exactly 0 here? Because this 0 line is matching up with a 0 on the Vernier. And all of the other ticks on this Vernier are slightly offset. So let's say I want to get to exactly 5. What I can do is just adjust back down. And then until this Vernier's 5 mark is exactly lined up um, with any tick mark on this major axis. So here now this 5 is lined up exactly with, this, uh, with the tick mark on the major axis. So I'm here now exactly 5 micron. And I can go to arbitrary levels of precision. I can go to uh, 4 micron by lining up this 4. So now this 4 is lined up here, and now I'm at 4 micron, I can line up to 3. Here's 3 micron, here's 2 micron, and I just kind of overshot that one, and here's 1 micron. So this Vernier scale is giving you incredible precision. In fact, you can make really precise adjustments, and as long as your calibration of your grinder doesn't change, you can always go back to the exact micron burr gap that your grinder was at with this Vernier scale. You're no longer kind of guessing you know, was I at 0.5 before and am I at 0.5 now? I'm not, I'm not really sure. But now you, with this Vernier scale, you just line up that 5 and here exactly 5 micron. And I can go to exactly 50 micron just by lining up that 0 so it's perfectly flat. Or I can go to 45 micron by lining up this 5 on the Vernier to a major uh, a tick on the major axis. So this Vernier I'm really, really <laughs> pleased with. I've had a prototype on my O for the past a day or so and I've really enjoyed using it so I, I made a nicer nicer version of it and I can make an even nicer version of this in the future if people are interested. So that is how I've uh, dealt with kind of this not so great <laughs> number scale on the stock code by making my own custom dial measuring the distance in micron. Of course everyone's zero point and everyone's grinder alignment is going to be slightly different so me telling you 10 microns is not going to be the same as 10 micron on your grinder but at least for you know your relative use if you want to go from you know filter back down to uh you know espresso you can like you can use this scale with this vernier you know on your own machine uh, to get very precise adjustments and to know exactly where you were uh, i've addressed a couple of the issues the first issue was with the step adjustment right and that was fixed with the stepless mod the second issue i had was with the scale itself another one of the issues i had was with retention so you can see here that some coffee's there, but if you were to take this bellows and kind of hit it, you would get more coffee out. So this bellows that I also printed is helping reduce the retention of the grinder. And I don't really mind retention. What I do mind is that I use this for decaf. And occasionally, now that I have Caspers in here, I'll, I'll try you know, other coffees in this grinder. And if I have reten retained grinds in this grinder, I can taste this dark roast decaf kind of heavily. And it, it'll taint a lot of other coffees I put in, especially if I don't purge it if I forget to purge or something. Okay, uh, and the last thing with this grinder is the power, right? It's a 150 watt motor. And really the solution to that is don't grind ultra light, ultra dense beans with this grinder. There's nothing else you can do. There's no way around that. You can't upgrade the motor you know, realistically. So you know, if you're gonna use the ode for espresso, even with all the modifications I've made, you know, new burrs inside, you know, alignments that I'll, I'll link up here if you want to align your burrs. The stepless mod, right, where you're now stepless, uh, and uh, this new scale and the bellows, all of these things here make this a really nice espresso grinder, except you can't grind ultra light espresso. Hell, you might not even be able to grind ultra light brewed coffee with this grinder. It's just not strong enough to do that. And so don't do it. That's it. Drink uh, dark roast. You can drink medium roast. I generally don't have any problems with this grinder except for the lightest of beans. You know, that's the ode for you. This is my highly modified ode that I use every day for espresso. A fellow tells you not to do it. I don't mind doing it. Um, I'm just very wary of the beans that I put in there. And as long as you're not putting in ultra, ultra light beans, this ode is going to be great for you uh, for espresso. Okay, so I promised that I'd pull a shot and I just put on a new scale. So hopefully I'm going to take this to about 30 micron with my new vernier and I'll grind 16 grams of this decaf for a, a nighttime affogato and film it for you guys just to prove to you that you can in fact make espresso with an ode and I've been doing it every day for months. All right, so let's pull a shot.
Let's do about 16 grams of espresso in. This is a ritual decaf, it's an ethyl acetate processed decaf. And these, if you're gonna drink decaf, I recommend getting ethyl acetate. That's Swiss water, tastes like decaf. I'm not a fan. Okay, I have 16.1 grams of coffee here. Give it a little RDP. And because I've just cleaned out this grinder, we can check the first dose retention. And these SSP Caspers are so fast. Ground so quickly. Turn off the portafilter and we'll see how much coffee is retained from first dose, uh, from the first grind on my Modified Fellow Oak. So it looks like about a gram, a gram of beans is still retained in this oat. And you know what? Honestly, this is not the um, lowest retention grinder. Let's see how much coffee we can get out if we bellows a little harder. Use a knocker. See, in here we've got a little bit more coffee out, but this is not really a gram. Yeah, about 0.1 gram, so... Let's toss a couple more beans and get to 16 grams. There's 16. So yeah, still some coffee left <laughs> inside this oat. That, you know, every coffee grinder has some crevices and stuff that uh, coffee gets into. Do a little WDT. Just tap it. Here you go, nice butt. Drop a puck screen on top. So there you go. An espresso pulled using Casper's on my Ode grinder.